we're shifting gears because we went from like squaring and cubing and all that kind of thing, and now I'm taking the square root of something. Okay. So again, let's go for some easy values, shall we? Uh, what's well? I think there's only maybe uh, there's only maybe one or two really good ordinates I can pick here, right? Maybe just one. Anyone want to give me a suggestion? Yeah, good. Um, when x equals to 1, the function y is going to be equal to 0. And I know what the square root of 0 is. It's 0. zero. And is that defined? Yes. It is defined, right? So therefore, I'm going to put a filled circle there. Now, I usually put crosses through where I pass through, but why am I putting a circle and filling it? Why am I doing that? Because it's asymptotes. Because the graph can never be negative. Good. I know that this has endpoints. Right? It starts and it stops because the square root can't exist when the number, at least in the real plane, which is what I'm graphing on, right? The square root of this guy can't exist. So therefore, between nor sorry, negative one and one, not inclusive, the graph doesn't exist. Okay? So that's why I put an endpoint there. Okay? Now, I can also see towards infinity over here, right? What's this asymptote, the horizontal asymptote? It's y equals one, right? So if I were to get to y equals 1, I know what the square root of 1 is as well. It's 1, right? But now the question becomes, just like I was trying to argue over here, right? I'm taking the square root. So am I going to be below this component graph, or am I going to be above? Now, take a minute to think about this, right? Take a minute to think. Remember when we were looking at squaring and cubing, right? If you're less than 1, that makes you closer to, it makes you lower, right? Because like, uh, I rubbed it off. Because, you know, nine tenths or a half, and you square it, you get lower. But here I'm not squaring, I'm doing the opposite. I am taking the square root, right? So therefore, rather than being lower, rather than being less, I should be greater than, right? Now, let me just try and convince you of this numerically. It's not hard, right? Um, think about, here's a, here's a fraction that I know the value of, right? What's the square root of a quarter? One. It's a half, right? Is a half bigger or smaller than a quarter? It's bigger. Right? So what I get out of this, if these two are equal and they're bigger than this guy, then the square oh, sorry, that's not what I right? The square root of a quarter is greater than a quarter, right? In fact, the square root of x, and this is gonna be part of our table that we draw in a minute, the square root of x is always bigger than x. Provided, yeah, provided what? Provided that x is a fraction that is between naught and one, yeah. right? Between naught and one. So I can say, you okay with that? Does that make sense? Of course, if I am bigger, right? Then it's completely different. You get a different argument. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. All of that just to argue. In here, I'm going to be above. Okay, so I'm going to get this kind of behavior. I know I can't possibly cross this asymptote. Sorry, is that what you're asking about? Or are you asking about the graph? No, 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 I mean that. The asymptote? Yep. I know I can't cross the asymptote because to get above y equals 1, I would need to be taking the square root of some number bigger than 1. Okay. Right? Every number up here, if you square it, will get you higher. And I don't have any of those points to work with. And why doesn't it go this way? Um, you mean like why doesn't it do that? Like go like this. The opposite, like increasing. Like you mean like like this? The yeah. different concavity. Yeah. Okay. How do I know it's going to be concave down rather than concave up? These are all the ordinates that I'm taking the square root of, right? All these ordinates here, but every single one of those ordinates fits this condition, right? So therefore, when I take the square root, I'm always going to be higher. I have to be higher, right? So therefore, I'm always up here. Now, in order to be down here, I'd have to be concave. Oh. I'd have to have the wrong concavity, okay. right? And then I'd have to be underneath here and pass through. Okay. But none of those values are ever going to do be outside of that. They're all between 0 and 1, okay? So that's why this is not happening, okay? All right, now, last little bit. When I have a look up here, right, what's happening? Well, these numbers are all above, think about the ordinates. They're all above one, right? All above one. So again, I'm going to try and make this argument over here. Okay. I'm going to say, well, think of a number above one. Two. Nine, I'm going to pick seven. the square number because I want I want square roots, right? So if I think of say the square root of four, 
The square root of 4 is 2. <laughs> Why? Anyway, okay. 2 is less than 4, right? Now, if these two guys are equal and they're both less than 4, then I conclude that the square root of 4 is less than 4. In other words, the square root of x is always less than x provided, rather than being in this kind of value, right? If x is bigger, right, I'm always going to be below. That makes sense. The square root of a number, the square root of a big number, will be less than that number. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 144 is 12, right? So square roots are beneath the numbers they're squaring if we're up there. Okay? So therefore, since they're all beneath, it's going to do something like this, right? It's the only argument you need to make. Okay. So there you go. Um, that's how to do a square root graph. It's not that complicated. We'll do one more example and then we're going to tie it all up in a summary. Okay. The graph, while you, um, you can get started while I tidy up my whiteboard. So when we actually guy. draw the graph, that's yep. it? Oh, like, yeah. Can okay. we draw the other components and then like draw the final graph with a different See how what I've tried to do is I've put my components in green. I frequently do that uh, because green, like you guys can clearly, clearly see, it's like, oh, that's not the main one. Like black or blue is going to be like, it's going to stand out more to me. When I look at your graph, if there's other stuff on there, I should be able to tell in a fraction of a second which one's the real graph. Now, if that's difficult because, you know, you're just doing it with all black pencil, okay, um, then you're going to need to rub off your components so I can see your actual graph by the end.